I don't personally think we need eight hours of sleep. I mean, if you look back at just like history, we always set these standards and then we change them as we go. Like the food guide pyramid, like nobody really listens to that anymore. We don't need 12 servings of grains. Do we really need eight hours of sleep? I'm not denying sleep is one of the most, if not the most important thing, but I think eight hours is like, I don't know, a, just a random number that's thrown out there and it just doesn't have to be that. I think it's all about sleep efficiency. And if we understand the neuroscience, the neurobiology, of how the brain works and what's happening during sleep, we can find what the benefit is and what we are trying to achieve. So this video is about leveraging sleep efficiency to get more sleep in less time by looking at the glymphatic system and cerebral spinal fluid. It sounds daunting and it sounds kind of scary, but it's pretty simple and straightforward. And after this video, I would invite you to check out my friends over at Blue Blocks down below. It's very relevant to this video because blocking blue light in the evening hours is pretty important to getting good quality sleep as well. So there's a special link and a special code down below. You typically want to block blue light after the sun goes down so you're not stimulating your brain to think it's awake. It allows your body to naturally produce its melatonin so you get that rhythm going a little bit more. I think it's one factor as to why we don't get as good of sleep as we should be but there's a lot of factors as well. So that special link down below, they're the ones that I recommend by and large. So that link down below will save you a couple bucks. So check them out after this video. Okay, so we're talking the glymphatic system, which I've mentioned in other videos, but I'll recap here really quick. The glymphatic system is a system within the brain with cerebral spinal fluid that flows through your brain to wash your brain. It's literally brainwashing, but it operates independent of like the lymphatic system in our body, which usually flushes out metabolites of movement and cells in our body, right? So our brain creates so much energy. It's 20% of our energy demand is right there in the 2% of our brain, okay? Now that creates a lot of metabolic waste and it's the job when we are asleep for cerebral spinal fluid to come in and flush that metabolic waste and allow us to, well, refresh, right? Well, there's some interesting studies that have been coming out. And if you look at sort of the biology of how it works and sort of just the, the neurochemistry, if you want to call it that, we have these things called AQP4. These AQP4 are like channels that allow cerebral spinal fluid, again, the, the, let's think of it as just like fluid that washes your brain, that allows it to get into areas of the brain that other things can't. Okay, special crevasses that allow it to get through the blood-brain barrier to actually wash the brain. Okay, well, when we sleep, that occurs a lot more. Well, check out this study. There's a study that was published in the journal PLOS Biology. It took a look at 123 people that had an AQP4 mutation. Now, what that means is they didn't express, they didn't produce a lot of these special channels that allow the cerebral spinal fluid to flush in and actually do its job in the brain. Well, they found when they did sleep studies that those that had the genetic mutation, they did not get the slow wave sleep or as much of the slow wave sleep that is needed for proper memory, which is interesting because when you look at other studies and you look at when there is less APQ4 or in a mouse study where they actually knocked out AQP4 altogether, they find that, hmm, they don't flush out things like beta amyloid plaque, which beta amyloid plaque is associated with Alzheimer's. So, hmm, memory, Alzheimer's. So if we're not actually getting this AQP4, we're not able to get the right kind of sleep that allows us to store memories right. When ultimately it sounds like the goal is how do we just get our sleep efficiency up so that we can get the benefit of sleep. But that's where we have to look at another study. This study was published in the journal Science. And this one was really wild because it found when we sleep, our neural cells shrink and the interstitial space surrounding the cell increases by 60%. Why, why is that important? Well, think about this. When a cell shrinks and the interstitial space grows, that is more space for cerebral spinal fluid to come in and wash that area. We actually now have a fluid that is, has room to come through and wash it. During the day when we are awake, that interstitial space shrinks by 90%, showing that when we are awake, cerebral spinal fluid is not flushing through our brain like it's supposed to. That happens when we sleep. So if we're not sleeping, we're not flushing brain metabolites and we feel, guess what? foggy and sleep deprived. 
perhaps that feeling that we're getting is because we're not able to actually wash our brain properly. So then when you look at quick ways to induce more AQP4 and induce more flushing and washing of the brain, it's pretty interesting. Mainly what you want to consider doing is exposing yourself to high heat a couple hours before bed. Okay, exposing yourself to high heat improves what's called intracranial pressure. Now, intracranial pressure is the best way that we can flex our brain to actually move the cerebral spinal fluid through it. So remember, like with our body, we can flex muscles and we can flush out metabolic waste. With our brain, we have no ability to move it. It's sealed in our brain, in our head. Okay, so we rely on intracranial pressure, but heat can trigger that. There's a study that was published in the journal Physiology that took a look at sauna, exercise, and just even really hot baths, and it found that that improved intracranial pressure by 18%. And that intracranial pressure has a direct impact on how we're able to move cerebral spinal fluid through. So if we're getting more cerebral spinal fluid through, then we could potentially get by with a little less sleep because we would need less neural shrinkage and less interstitial space to actually get the job done because we have more pressure pushing fluid through the brain. So as part of your overall strategy to get better sleep, you do want to look into doing things like that. Sauna treatments, very hot baths if you can't do a sauna, or relatively high intensity exercise, but a few hours before you go to sleep. Now, again, this is not something you need to do every day, but it's something to build the pattern. And that's kind of the benefit, is the high heat can actually trigger more AQP4 expression. What that means is you're creating more channels for cerebral spinal fluid to flow through, meaning it's a relatively permanent change. AQP4, yes, it can go away, but if you're increasing the expression by periodically doing high intensity exercise or periodically doing sauna treatments or periodically doing very hot baths, then you create more AQP4 that sticks around for the long term and allows the cerebral spinal fluid to come through and do its job. I know I sound like a super nerd, but I am a busy person, you are a busy person. I'm not saying you need to rely on four hours of sleep, but if I can consistently get six hours of good sleep instead of eight hours of BS sleep, I'll take it any day of the week. I'll see you tomorrow.